Hold there, outsider. These hills belong to the Reachfolk, Rover. Turn around and go back the way you came, or I'll have your nose for a trophy. Witch rebels, huh? That's just a label applied by the oppressors, don't you think? Look, we have enough trouble with those Greyhose bastards and Carrick soldiers. We don't need a curious outsider blundering around and getting in our way, too. You're a hunter? Truly? Sounds more like Carrick and his keep witch getting up to more mischief. You want to befriend the witch rebels? Then prove it. The Greyhose has set up stockpiles nearby. Find out what they're storing, and then we'll talk. The stockpiles were spotted to the east and south. If you can find out what the Grey Host is using them for, then we'll owe you a favor. And true Reach folk never renege on a favor. If I knew for certain, there'd be no need to have you go and take a look, would there? Probably supplies for their army. Though what vampires and werewolves need is anyone's guess. Ritual items, things for their harrowcraft. That's what I expect. Aye. Harrowcraft is what we call the rituals we've seen the Greyhost perform when they summon those cursed storms. Then you know the Greyhost has recruited Ice Reach witches to conjure up their storms. They use fetishes and alchemical mixtures in the rituals, so it makes sense they need a place to store those components. Are you daft, outsider? Do I look like a witch to you? A true witch has power. Hears the spirits, knows the old words, commands animals, things like that. Some use their power to help. Others use it to kill. Ice Reach witches are particularly evil. Well, you'll probably have to fight them again. They stalk these hills like old ghosts. They're allied with the Grey Host now, don't you know? Greedy hags, the lot of them. I respect their strength, but their hearts are all twisted inside. There may be a piece of sorts inside, Markarth, but out here we're outnumbered and fighting for our lives. Nothing unusual on that. We won't let the Grey Host desecrate our land, and we won't let Karak give it away just to avoid a little blood. I don't shirk from tough situations, but that cat asks the impossible. You won't find a braver, more trustworthy mercenary than me. But I'm not suicidal. When that cat asked for help, I didn't know she was planning to walk into the Leviathan's maw, so to speak. There's a tough-talking Khajiit from House Ravenwatch. Calls herself a Dusadaro. She's looking for someone. To help her with a delicate mission. I was all set to volunteer. For the right price, of course. And she told me the details. She wants to enter the old dwarven ruins and find someone named Cathad. But those ruins are crawling with vampires. Boss Trendler's Lothid clan, to be exact. I told her no thank you. I'd hate to walk away from gold. But I can't spend it if I'm dead. You want to find a Dusadaro? You're braver than I am, I'll give you that. Last I saw, she was near that old dwarven tower sticking out of the mountain. They say it's an ancient lift. She plans to use it to reach the lair of the Lothid clan. People talk. You hear things. 
The Lothid are a gang of vampire criminals led by Boss Trendler. They terrorize the locals, charge protection, demand blood tribute, that sort of thing. They use the old ruin as a lair, exactly where Adusa wants to go. What's to tell? I don't really know her. She's connected to some Rivenspire noble house, Ravenwatch, I think. She put out a call for mercenaries and offered a dung ton of gold. If it involved anything other than the Lothid clan, I'd be all in. This one hates criminals, especially vampire criminals. This one, Tefan. Come, Harrier. Give me your measure. Tefan told me about you, Harrier. You wanted to talk? Well, here I am. What will it be? A battle? I haven't turned anyone into a goat recently, but I'm willing to try if you so much as raise your weapon. Why does everyone insist on calling us that? 
Tayfern, remind me to come up with a better name when time permits. As for later, well, I guide this gathering of rich folk if that's what you're asking. But what about you? Why are you here? Of course she is. She's a vampire, after all. We tried to slay her twice without much luck. Quick as a spooked hare, that one, and twice as cautious. We'll have her fangs soon enough, though. You can read? What else does that sheet of paper say? The leader? Now that's a worthy bit of news. Bones and birds guide us well, but there's no replacing a cunning hunter. Go to the Barrow, Harrier. Listen in on their meeting. Find out what Belaine and her master are up to, and I'll hear you out. The spirits will see you safely to Valthum, Harrier. After that, I suggest stealth and a strong blade. Overthrow Markarth? What in Namira's name would I do with all that dead stone? No, my purpose is clear. I need to help our people by shaking Kadok out of his dream. If that doesn't work, I'll split his skull and let it spill out on its own. Kadok's dream of being king. Oh, he has a true heart. In better times, he's a fine leader. But we face a lean season. We're hungry. But instead of filling the larder, he dreams of a golden crown. His foolish pride has brought this upon our people. Not yet. Not until all the beasts of the woods howl his name. And every day he heeds Belaine is another day he proves me right. The Grey Host has dark plans for Markarth. Kadok's stubbornness will get everyone in that city killed. I am. And a fine one at that. What? Never met a witch before, Harrier? I'm sure. We're not all like the blood-sucking Belaine, or my misguided sisters from Icerich, though. Some of us aren't over-enthusiastic malcontents with a penchant for violence and destruction. Not all the time, anyway. Daedra? Oh, the spirits. The old ones. Yes, I've heard them called that. The world is full of whispers, for those with the patience to hear. Most them bloods are just too busy begging pardons from dead gods to pay attention. Pity. Daedra, spirits, crows, it's all the same. Where you see evil gods, we see teachers. Cruel ones, for certain. But that's the world, right? A stone will kill you if it strikes your head. But lifting the same stone makes us strong. What's to tell? I'm a proud woman of the Reich, a daughter of wind, sweat, and the rich soil. As for my brothers and sisters, they're good Reich folk, every last one of them. They mind the spirits and love the land. The real question is, who are you? A fine name, I suppose, for an outsider. But what's in your heart? Most them bloods come to the Reich wheezing under the weight of their purses and writ laws. You, though. I smell the blood of the rich in you. Not much, but maybe it's enough. Aye, free blood. That's what the rich is. Freedom. In the rich, we do as we please. Only way to stop us is to kill us. And we don't die easy. Same goes for you, I'd say.
not be concerned, Radha Alsaran. Your plan proceeds. Kadok hangs on my every word, and soon Reach Folk will fill Markarth like a larder. Excellent. With Markarth prepared, we need only claim the Ark and Keystone. Hmm. I'll make inquiries. Just remember our arrangement. Like you, I hate to be disappointed. You there, in the shadows. You can't hide from the Ashen Lord. Follow me, if you dare. You actually followed. There's fire in your veins, I'll give you that. Very well. You may speak to me. You, the thorn that caused me no small amount of irritation in solitude. You thought yourself so clever, so stealthy spying on me from the shadows. But the darkness answers to me. Why have you come to this forsaken barrel? You stand before Radha al-Saran and seek to understand his purpose. Better a torch bug try to comprehend the secrets of alchemy, or a mud crab the intricacies of necromancy. These events began millennia before your birth. They concern you not at all. Who is this we you speak of? Certainly not the Reach folk. No, there is someone else. I see them, lurking in your thoughts. An ally, almost as ancient as I am. They're desperate to forestall the coming night. Tell me, who is this person? And I don't have to resist the urge to rip out your throat and gorge on your blood. But we are civilized beings, exchanging pleasantries in this humble setting. Perhaps we can come to some sort of arrangement. A tip for a tap, as it were. I propose a simple arrangement. A truth for a truth. Ask a question. I will answer honestly, then I will ask a question in turn. A fair compromise, don't you agree? Excellent. Then by all means, ask your first question. I have no interest in conquering the Reach. I came here to make use of something very old, very powerful. The Reach has the misfortune to be located directly above it. Many of these mortals will die, not because I want them to, but because they must. Not when your purpose is worthy. I do what I do for love. My turn. Your ally. Are they a high elf? A lie. But I see the truth in your thoughts. Still, I shall give you another chance. Ask another question. Lady Belaine is an ally of convenience. Her interests and my design are selfish and predictably narrow. Do you seek to supplant her in Kadok's court? I recommend against that, for it will not go well for you. A threat implies only the possibility of punishment. I do not threaten. Belaine has Kadok's ear. If he takes your side, she kills him and chaos descends on Markarth. If he stands by Belaine, you will be executed. Neither outcome benefits you. Others? Who? Reach folk, the witch Arana, your mysterious ally. I am unconcerned. Now, for my question. This ally that hides behind your eyes, does he seek to protect the world by going against his own kind? Of course he does. Thank you for your honesty. Now, do you have anything else to ask?
I have no interest in conquering the Reach. I came here to make... Not when your purpose is worthy. I do what I do for love. Your honesty does you credit. Thank you. Do you have another question? That is a complicated question. A being as old as I can claim many origins. This flesh was born on the distant isles of Yokuda. This spirit was forged on the bloody shores of Hammerfell. This purpose... It grew from love. And necessity. That word holds little meaning for me now. But yes, in my youth I dedicated my life to perfection. In art, perfection. In love, perfection. In war, especially in war, perfection. To attain glory in Yokuda, nothing less would do. Is it? Beyond the Sea of Pearls, peerless sword masters were as common as grains of sand. Even the grandest victories felt commonplace. In a land of heroes, how can anyone claim to be exceptional? Precisely. After the conquest of Hammerfell, I wandered in search of new challenges. I found only one. Lecky. Daughter to Rutger, and master of the sword. We fought for three grueling days, without pause for rest or nourishment. But I didn't win. I didn't lose, either. I could not accept a draw, however. The cold reality of my imperfection. That resentment drove me to Moloch Ball. It took the patient wisdom of a friend to break perfection's hold on me. Now, your turn. Your ally, are they a vampire? Interesting. A picture begins to emerge. Do you have anything else to ask? As you wish, know that this level of cordiality will not be repeated. And this is not a threat. If you continue to meddle in my affairs, I will take far more than your life. On that, you have my word.
What? What do you want? Welcome back, my friend. Tell me what you learned. Your arrival is fortuitous, as I have only just returned myself. Were you able to make contact with the rebels? Did you meet with Arana? I sensed some deception, but her illusion is powerful. How else did she hide her nature from me? As for Arana, do you think we can convince her and her rebels to join our cause? You spoke to Rodda. Did he...? <sighs> no matter. If Rodda al Siron is here, our time grows short. Talk to Kadak. If he deems what you tell him worthy, maybe he'll finally be willing to work with me. Then we can figure out how to deal with the Grey Host. It was only a matter of time before Rodda and I crossed paths again. I just didn't think it would be this soon. Rodda al Siron and I... <sighs> We have a complicated history. There was a time when Rodder and I stood united in purpose, to preserve the lives and welfare of vampires. Then, as now, our kin suffered under Molag Bol's curse, and the cruelty of mortal hunters. Not exactly. At least, not all at once. When I first met Rodder, he was immensely proud, but utterly consumed by his failures. He tried to find relief in bloodshed and battle, but he was truly lost. I did my best to help him. Yes, his bloodlust gave way to introspection, and introspection led to study. He was already a peerless scholar. All Anse were, but he became fascinated with vampire texts. Eventually, he found a new purpose. Vampiric salvation. To accomplish this, he needed to break Molag Bol's hold over us and stop mortals from hunting us. I counseled peace with mortals, and for a while he agreed. But things changed, and I left the Grey Host. I thought he died with them. I sought to make the world a better place. I thought the Grey Council could help, but when it became the Grey Host... I formed the Raven Watch as an atonement. For things I failed to do, friends I failed to save. From mortals, and from themselves. <laughs> 